Hey, good morning. Hey, how are you? Nice to meet you. Uh, thanks for joining. Uh, let's give it a couple of more minutes to see if more folks join, and then we can get started. Sure. All right, I think it's just going to be the three of us, but um, well, welcome. Uh, we're excited to have you here and like to hear more about the Open Tofu uh, project, the progress. Uh, I think there's been a lot of uh, conversations on Twitter and LinkedIn about uh, how the project got forked from Terraform and also how HashiCorp uh, changed their their license, you know, from I think they had a IT or or Apache, or and then they changed mm -hmm. changed the business license, and a group of folks actually decided to fork off the current Terraform project and make it a uh, open source. But I think it might diverge in terms of features in in the future. Right now, it might be it's very similar to what Terraform has, but uh, in the future, it might be very different. Uh, so we'd like to hear about that and some of your plans and and this meeting is getting recorded and we'll post it on the cncf tech runtime channel uh, so for the folks that can actually or are actually interested sure sounds good so i have some slides so i'll just turn on screen sharing and uh, we'll tell you a bit more about open tofu can you see my screen yeah excellent uh fair enough so I'm here to tell you a bit about open tofu and basically you know as you said uh, a bit of, about its background so its origin how it started uh, but also its goals and plans for the for the immediate future and just to start about me i'm kuba i'm a software engineering team lead at spacelift i'm the interim tech lead at open tofu and you can find me on github and other places now to start with what is open tofu so open tofu is a system to declaratively manage your infrastructure by describing it uh, through code. Now, if, for people who also don't understand, uh, don't know Terraform, uh, basically what this means is that you describe your desired state of your infrastructure. You know, I like to have five as three buckets, for example, uh, and Open Tofu can make that happen. You, you can create a plan that will tell you how Open Tofu would uh, like to approach getting to your desired state, creating five buckets, and then you tell it to do this. And then, you know, you modify this, you want to two more buckets, you want to change something, add some EC2 machines. Uh, you just describe the desired state, Open Tofu will figure out the details. Now, why are we doing this? So Terraform, uh, a while ago in August, uh, changed its license to the BSL. Previously, it was MPL, uh, which is not open source anymore. And we do believe that Terraform's main value 
uh, is basically the ecosystem of providers and modules around it. Uh, and we believe that this ecosystem could flourish because everybody believed Terraform to be open source because the providers were open source. And it was basically the industry-wide standard for infrastructure as code for providers, which are kind of the connectors between the two and various cloud providers. Uh, and from those providers, other projects can benefit too because, you know, Kulumi, for example, also wraps many Terraform providers instead of rolling their own. Now, OpenTofu is basically a fully open source fork of Terraform uh, at the time when it was still uh, open source, and it's meant to stay uh, open source and very community driven. Now, to, to go about a bit about the timeline uh, and see how that evolved on the 14th of August, uh, we published a manifesto, so describing our stance and asking HashiCorp to, to reverse the license change. Uh, a while later, on the 5th of September, we published a fork on GitHub. Note, this was not the moment we started work. We started work uh, a while before uh, because we had to, you know, make the repository free of trademark violations, uh, do some initial renaming. There's already a lot of changes that have happened before making this uh, fork public and available to anybody to contribute to, to the public to basically see and take for a spin if they want to. Then on the 20th of September, uh, on the Bilbao Open Source Summit, Keynote, we launched as a Linux Foundation project with a new name, which is OpenTofu, the one you know now. Previously, the working title was OpenTF, but then we launched as OpenTofu under the Linux Foundation. Uh, and then on the 4th of October, two weeks later, we released our first alpha release. Uh, this was basically the moment where it became very easy to take OpenTofu for a spin and give us feedback. Uh, and since then, we've already had four more alpha releases uh, and soon we'll have more. And I'll talk about that a bit as well in a moment. Now, obviously the main goal for, sorry, I. Obviously, the main goal right now for the project is to actually deliver a stable release so people can switch to OpenTofu for the production workloads. Uh, and there are really two, uh, two kind of milestones here that we need to achieve prior to that happening. And one is Terraform 1.6.x compatibility, uh, and the other is having a stable registry. So. First of all, let's take a look at this compatibility thing. So OpenTofu is a fork at the point in August, uh, but it's not meant to, as you actually introduced yourself, uh, replicate Terraform's feature. It's it's planning to go its own path. And in however, in practice, uh, there's a lot of good feature development happening in Terraform as well. Uh, so OpenTofu is basically evaluating features on a case-by-case -case basis and deciding uh, if we also want to have that feature, maybe we want to have it in a slightly different way. Right now, we're trying to keep fully compatible to make migrating to OpenTofu uh, as simple as possible. So really, the two main things the testing feature, which basically allows you to write test cases for your open tofu modules, uh, and the revamp of the S3 state backends to make its configuration more in line uh, with the AWS provider. Uh, and then there's the second topic, the stable registry. And to give you some background, uh, tofu uses providers and modules. So providers, as I said, are those connectors to cloud providers, while modules are basically pre-coded pre uh, sets of infrastructure that you can reuse across your projects. And both of those things live in a registry. And this is the registry is uh, used for discoverability. It's used to download those things. But really, the registry is actually mostly a GitHub redirector. So it's a metadata hosting service uh, primarily. And the artifacts generally, there are exceptions, generally live in uh, GitHub. Now, there was a terms of service change which to the HashiCorp registry, which basically uh, said that from now on, you can only use it with uh, HashiCorp Terraform, which means, you know, if you have your own forks or you have bigger forks like OpenTofu, uh, those can't use that registry, which means we are building our own stable registry. Now, to describe the process a bit more in detail, on the 4th of October, when we released the first alpha version, uh, we already released it with our custom alpha 
registry. Uh, and it was mostly, you know, an end-to-end -end working registry, working as this GitHub redirector, supporting most of the, if not all the providers and modules that are available, uh, the HashiCorp registry, uh, and good to actually get started with Open Tofu. However, for the stable release, we, we really needed to get to something that we're comfortable with, you know, for production use uh, and for long-term maintainability for the Open Tofu core uh, team. So we had an, to be, well, community driven, we had an uh, RFC call for, for, call for proposals. So people could, could submit RFCs uh, for how we should design the stable registry. There was a two week period for that. Uh, and then on the 2nd of November, our technical steering committee picked one of the designs, uh, which uh, will become the stable registry and the design that was chosen is a homebrew inspired design uh, it's very different from the HashiCorp registry uh, basically the whole catalog of providers and modules is stored in github very very similar to homebrew uh, this way people can you know submit new providers and modules just by opening PRs to a GitHub repository. Uh, in practice the whole registry protocol uh, is just a bunch of JSON files so in the end all this metadata is rendered to a protocol compatible set of static files uh, that is almost fully compatible uh, with the existing Terraform registry uh, protocol. And we're just going to host it on Cloudflare R2. Now, regarding the bigger vision for the Open Tofu project, we see it as it should be easy to migrate to Open Tofu from Terraform. So, as I said, right now we're trying to think keep things very compatible to make it easy for people to migrate longer term and then this might devolve as we might have more new features uh, that will differ from terraform and then people might there might be some changes in terraform that we don't follow uh, we'll see about that this will mostly be driven by by the community and by what the community wants us or expects us to do uh, another goal, goal is to stay open source forever under well-known and widely accepted license uh, this is currently the mpl and we're not planning to change this. Uh, we're planning for Open Tofu to be community driven, where any big changes are basically going for an RFC process where the community can discuss in public uh, while the technical steering committee can then make a final call uh, and impartial under the neutral governance of the Linux uh, Foundation. And now to go a bit more into the feature development process, how we see it, uh, it's fully public, uh, happening via RFCs. Uh, the discussion is happening in the open, so anybody who wants to take part in the discussion can, which is very valuable as experts in any given domain can uh, can join the discussion. Uh, and then the final call after community discussion is made, made by a steering committee that is composed of members from multiple companies backing the project. Uh, regarding the roadmap, so there isn't any concrete roadmap right now because Right now, we're concentrating on getting this stable release out the door, and we don't want to focus too much on reviewing, discussing, and accepting RFCs prior to that. Uh, so a concrete roadmap will actually appear a while after the stable release. Uh, but some concrete ideas that we've had in mind, uh, one is state encryption. So a very common complaint about Terraform is that the state files, you know, contain secrets, plan files contain secrets, they contain a lot of sensitive values. Uh, this means that you generally have to trust the state backend where you store your state. Now, this is often a reasonable assumption, but sometimes you'd like to not trust the state backend. So with state encryption, we're planning to introduce end-to-end -end encryption for your state files, so you can use either just an AS key or maybe a service like KMS uh, to encrypt your state end to end so that the S3 bucket, object storage, or whatever you use to store your state file uh, doesn't have any view into the values of that state file. Another idea we've had is support for OCI registries. I've mentioned that uh, there is a registry for providers and modules, but it's a fully custom protocol. Well, in practice, uh, the protocol and the, the artifacts hosted there are fairly simple and OCI registries, which are right now mostly used for, for container images, but also increasingly more for other types of artifacts, uh, they would be a great fit for hosting those providers and modules. So adapting OpenTofu to also additionally supporting OCI registries, especially for, for enterprises and companies that want to self-host some registries for their internal providers and modules, uh, is also one of our ideas that we'd like to discuss uh, with the community and and see whether 
this is a, a good direction to go to. Uh, and as I said, a full actual roadmap uh, is coming eventually. Now, regarding a timeline uh, for, for OpenTOFU, we're planning to make a stable release that will be accompanied by a stable registry, uh, something that you'll actually be able to put into prod between mid-December and mid-January. In practice, the biggest really blocker to this is the stable registry. Prior to this, we expect there to be a release candidate in beta. So everything will kind of go first through community testing, through our testing, uh, before there is actually a stable release. And that's really a full overview of the current state of Open Tofu. Happy to answer any questions if you have any. Uh, this is great. I'm happy to see the progress in the project. Um, do you do you currently have uh, folks uh, interested in using uh, Open Tofu? I, I, I bet there's a lot of people in the community, but I'm just curious if you heard of anybody. Oh, yeah, totally. And yeah. can start it with with using it. Sure. We, we've actually been surprised how many people started using the alpha. I don't have any exact numbers, but it's much more than we expected. The alpha isn't production ready, uh, but a lot of community members have started taking it for a spin. We see a lot of activity on our alpha registry, people fetching providers, people fetching modules, uh, people reporting bugs when they find any. But in general, it seems to be a good experience. Uh, people are happy using it and people are using it. Our Slack community is almost one in 1.5 K by this time. So, so there's a lot of interest. So that's great. Uh, in terms of, uh, uh, sponsors, do you have, uh, any, uh, vendors sponsoring the project or, or is it just yes. a completely community driven? Uh, no, no. So there, there's multiple vendors sponsoring, uh, sponsoring Open Tofu right now. I believe the list to be Spacelift and Zero Scaler, Gruntworks, uh, Harness are the biggest sponsors. Uh, with m more coming. Uh, in practice, we have multiple full-time engineers working on Open Tofu. Uh, we have a whole core team that is growing and hiring engineers. Uh, regularly there's multiple people hired just to work on open tofu awesome and do you um what well, do you know um uh, you know people want to a, a lot of these folks actually want to migrate to to open tofu from terraform so the, a, a lot of these users are that type of users uh, primarily or, or is it more like uh just yes brand new any users that they're that are just like thinking about using the tool from the beginning i'm curious oh, uh, i'm sure there's uh, a lot of new users but really i think that the core user base are existing users of terraform who've decided to not upgrade to 1.6 very often because of the license change uh, and decided to wait to uh, for open tofu to switch to that instead great and then Terraform has this uh, uh, Terraform user interface. Uh, I, have they talked about maybe creating some sort of interface for Open Tofu in in the future? So, so Terraform itself, the CLI doesn't have a user interface. So it has a paid product Terraform Cloud above it, in a sense. Right. right. Uh, that's right. that's basically there's a split. There's the Terraform CLI, which was open source and is now source available, uh, and then there's the SaaS. Uh, Terraform Cloud, which is a CI CD uh, for Terraform. Uh, now, Open Tofu uh, by itself is supported by multiple specialized infrastructures code CI CD providers, uh, like those companies that I've mentioned. So, Spacelift and Zero Scaler Harness uh, and Runtworks are all all have are all CI CD providers uh, for Open Tofu and support Open Tofu. So they are basically the the UI that you could want to use when using Open Tofu. Makes sense. Makes sense. Great to see all the activity and and the progress. Um, are there any particular areas where the project is looking for help and and for people to get involved? Sure. So I think right now the biggest area that people can help with is actually taking it for a spin, checking the current setups 
trying out open tofu in you know their dev environments making sure that their current infrastructure works without a hitch with open tofu this is really the biggest help that we can get right now which is testing and helping us make sure that the stable release will be as stable as possible fortunately we already have a lot of people as i said doing this but really there's never enough uh, longer term, we'll surely have a lot of issues to pick up. Right now, there's not that many. And the ones that appear are basically picked up like that by somebody. And the next day, uh, there's already a contribution. So, uh, so yeah. So it's it's not easy to, to, to find an issue right now to contribute to code-wise. But testing, uh, giving feedback is very, very valuable. That's great. That's a good, good position to be in. <laughs> <laughs> Another uh, uh, question, how, how are you tracking this uh, help from other people? Are, are, you, are people actually, um, you know, saying or, or writing somewhere that they're actually trying the product? Yeah. And, and actually and saying like, oh, we, we already tried it and, and then we found these issues. Oh, of course, if they found the issues, they can open a GitHub issue. but. Totally. In some, in some cases, they so, were actually successfully. So I'm not sure if uh, that's actually been tracked. So, so if you, I'm still screen sharing my mic. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So if you go to our website, the Open Tofu Org website, you have a link to Slack, and this is a, a place for discussion where a lot of discussion happens and a lot of people discuss the usage of Open Tofu. So that's one place, uh, and the other main one really is GitHub. Uh, so generally, people are reporting their, their bugs as GitHub issues. And this is where, where most of the technical conversation happens, where, where bug reports happen. Uh, but regarding usage, uh, the way we see it is by, first of all, seeing downloads of Open Tofu. Uh, I believe there's been over 15,000 downloads by now. Uh, which is quite a bit, actually. Uh, and we also see, so as I said, we have this alpha registry, and when using Open Tofu, we kind of need providers and modules to uh, to productively use Open Tofu. Uh, so we see in the registry which providers, which modules are downloaded, how many times, and from this we can infer that people are actually using it. Gotcha, gotcha, thanks. Um... A related question is, uh, can you actually use uh, Terraform providers? Uh, you can plug into yes. the system? Okay. Yes. Open Tofu is fully compatible with existing providers. All existing providers are available through the Open Tofu registry. Uh, as I said, they're basically hosted on GitHub, really. Uh, and the registry is mostly a redirector that, that you know, gives the CLI, the metadata, and redirects it to GitHub. Uh, so all providers and modules are usable, uh, which is specifically why we're very much encouraging people to try out OpenTofu with their existing setups on their dev environments, staging environments, uh, and give us feedback if everything is working as expected. In, in the future, some of these providers, Terraform providers, will not actually work, I, was, I assume, right? Because uh, some of the... Why so? Like the language, it, so you you have the um, HCL language that mm -hmm. might might actually be different in the future, or or the goal is just to always be compatible with the the HashiCorp uh, language. Great question. Great question. Uh, so in practice, regarding the providers itself. The, the language doesn't matter too much here. There's the provider protocol. But since the providers, the provider framework, the provider SDK are all MPL, we don't expect breaking changes. And if there are any, we, we plan to be compatible with those. So we plan to be compatible with Terraform providers also going forward. Now, with modules, uh, if there are incompatible language features uh, in HCL, then th that might be a problem. Uh, in practice, any language in practice, there's not many language changes happening, but if uh, if they'll be happening on the side of Terraform, then we will decide on a community-driven way if this is a feature that we want to port uh, and support, if this is not one that we want to support. There might be language changes that we make that aren't available in Terraform. And then if module authors will use those language features, then of course, this will make a module only usable with one of the projects. Makes sense. Yeah, because I've used Terraform and in some cases, you know, you can't remember, but for example, I might have been using Terraform 1.0 and then the code 
uh, was not compatible with 1.2 or something like that. It was actually made. Uh, Okay, some makes sense. Some, some times and uh, no, so we're also remaining fully backwards compatible. So from 1.0, if you have Terraform code, it should work as is with open tofu and also work as is going forward. I don't got it. But who knows? I mean, they might might decide to change something in the future, and but they you'll sure. be watching. You'll be watching I exactly. Guess. But, yeah. Awesome. Uh, we have Christian on the call. Christian, do you have any? Any comments and questions? Anything about Open Tofu? Uh, I didn't, but it seems pretty, uh, pretty interesting. And uh, I, this is the other. I think this is the second project that I've seen that's done this kind of uh, Buzel response type of uh, uh, change before. So yeah, it seems pretty interesting from what I've seen. I did uh, come in a little bit late though, so I apologize for that. No worries. Thank you. Though. Thanks. Just curious, what's the other project that you saw with the? Visual, uh, uh, I don't recall. I apologize. Uh, all I know is that um, yeah, it was. I I do look at quite a few of them, uh, before. So yeah, I apologize. I don't recall. No worries. No worries. Yeah, I think uh, we'll see a lot of these projects uh, come up uh, in the future because of this new licensing. It's uh controversial, <laughs> so that's that's for a longer discussion, I guess, and open discussion, but it has its benefits and drawbacks. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so it looks like um, I'll be reviewing the recording for this one. It seem, it does seem super interesting. Uh, my, my company does use Terraform quite a bit, um, both in uh, both practically and also in teaching it as well. So yeah, definitely want to see if there are alternatives out there, see uh, and discuss the ecosystem around uh, Terraform uh, and other CM tools out there, uh, which is always nice to uh, to tell the students. So this is good work, definitely. Awesome, great to hear that. Well, make sure to take Open Tofu for a spin on some dev environments and let us know if it's working well for you. Absolutely, thank you. Another related question that I just thought of based on Christian's comments: uh, Do you have a plan to um, to uh, in the community or in, uh, with the Open Tofu? Uh, steering committee to train some co users and users, for example, uh, for, uh, on on some of the changes, right? Because I mean, this this tool, I mean, Terraform is, is used across the industry, so I would imagine that a lot of other people are going to start using Open Tofu, and maybe they um, they want to get trained on. Uh, have they actually talked about that or not yet? Uh, sure. So we don't yet have any plans set in stone. In practice, right now, uh, the state open tofu is in whatever Terraform knowledge you have, you can just transfer it to using open tofu. Uh, longer term, we'll see. Uh, we we have some ideas. I know there's some also certification programs in the Linux Foundation and the CNCF. So uh, we'll see how it evolves longer term. Sounds good. Are you a Linux Foundation project or your CNCF or you're not seeing a CNCF project because I haven't seen your application in the CNCF uh, ecosystem. Anybody, so. We're or Linux what? Foundation project. We're Linux Foundation project and uh, hope to become a CNCF project eventually. Oh, okay, so we'll become, also you'll be applying maybe when you release your your candidate a final candidate or something 1.0 or, or whenever you i i don't have <laughs> many details about that part because this is mostly handled by the technical steering committee actually this part sounds good well thank you very much uh, any last minute questions all right i'm not here all right so uh, awesome we'll see Awesome. We'll see you all around and, and, uh, and hope to see a lot more of this. I mean, I think, I think it's going to be really useful for, for a lot of folks. Got to hear that. Hear that. Have a nice rest of the week. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Yes.